Okay, welcome to the Monday, October 18th, 2021 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let committee members and staff introduce themselves. Eric Gilbertson, committee member. Steve Everett, committee member. Martha Smirsky, member. Liz Pritchett, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. I will let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay. All right, so I think everybody we have on tonight um, is applicants, but there might be some people watching from home on ORCA who need to hear what's going on and know how to come in. Um, for anyone viewing this meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's design review committee meeting via the Zoom platform, either using uh, video or telephone access options. So there's this link here that you can use, um, and that'll get you right into the Zoom platform. Alternatively, you can just call in using this phone number and meeting ID here. That'll let you listen and speak, although you won't necessarily be able to see stuff on the screen. Um, if you're trying to access the meeting and you're having issues, please email me um, and I'll be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, uh, for anybody on via Zoom tonight, and we do have a couple of people, turning your video on is optional. Um, also, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. And the Zoom chat function should really only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. If you have, you know, some sort of substance matter that you need to pipe up with, then please use your raise hand button on your toolbar or otherwise, if you're on video, actually raise your hand and we'll be monitoring that throughout the meeting. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain and I will get notice of that via my email. I'm going to now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Unless anybody from the committee has anything to add at this point, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved, Eric. And I'll second it. This is Martha. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Steve. Yes. The agenda is approved. Unless anybody has anything else to add at this point, we can go to the first application for 70 Main Street. Big Fish Enterprises. Is someone there to explain your application? Yeah. So if you could come up to the seat there in front of the microphone and just make sure you speak really clearly into the microphone. That way both people remote can hear you as well as our recording secretary when she takes the minutes from the recording. Hi, my name is Abby and am I speaking Yes. Can everybody remotely hear Abby? No. Oh, no. Oh, it's, try it again. Just get close as you can to the microphone. Hi, my name is Abby. Can you hear me now? Okay, great. Um, do you spell that with a Y? I do. A B B Y. Yep. Last and what's your last name? J E N N E. Okay. And describe your application. Okay, so here at Charlio's, um, we're hoping that we could bring back the ceiling to floor windows we had um previously to the late 70s early 80s when we had to basically cut them in half because people were being thrown through them frequently um, that's no longer the case and as the town gears up for our new outdoor life we would like to have windows that we too could open to the public now that we're a bar that we're a little more proud of <laughs> than we were back then um, and so the, the design in mind um, that Jesse has me pitching to you is a sort of garage door style uh, door, much like Carice's at, um, at Langdon Street um, at the corner. And the reason we prefer the garage door style to the sliding style for positive pies is that we don't have enough width 
of the building to slide anything. Um, but we do have ceilings that we could we could use for that purpose. Um, and I, I think that's basically it. Uh, as far as the aesthetics go, we're absolutely willing to work with whatever the city would like to see in front of them um, in order to make it look as beautiful as possible. It can only be an improvement in my humble opinion. <laughs> so, so there's that. And I'm here for questions. Are the, I see that the sections are tubular aluminum extrusion and it says non-insulated. They make an aluminum extrusion that has a thermal break. Oh, wow. It has a, it, there's a tight rubber piece that connects the pieces together, but gives you a thermal break because otherwise you're going to end up with ice on the inside oh, wow. in the winter when it's below zero. Okay. And that's the only thing we would recommend. Uh, they're a little more money, but you will save that in the first year I in your heating it. bill. We're already leaky enough as far as heating goes. So. And you want these as tight as possible. Yep. And the other recommendation would be that the, the center mullions mm -hmm. would be as small as possible uh, given the need for structural integrity. Um, Abby, this is Martha. Um, I have some problems with the size of these windows. It really changes the look of the building from what we have learned to love here of, over the last 40 years. And for that reason, I really am not comfortable with this. Um, it is so much larger than the windows that exist. And as you pointed out, the um, place on Langdon Street and Positive Pie they, their windows actually were the same size as those existing. And this makes a lot of difference to me. Well, with all due respect, Martha, um, I have a photograph in the packet. I don't believe it's in this packet, but in our original application, it's in showing our, that the it's windows historically were the size that we're, we're hoping to do now. Yeah, I saw that. Yep, um, they're just able to open is the only difference. Yeah, I think I think large windows like that were common, although they usually were just maybe four panes at the most. Right. Um, on older, you know, historic, you know, like early 20th century storefront buildings. Um, yeah. So. And like so I said, oh, go ahead. I'm so sorry. That's all right. You go ahead. Well, what I was going to say is that um, I think that. If we look at what the color of the inside appears to be during the day, we could probably match that color with the is that word mullions um, to make it as as subtle as possible that they are garage doors. Because one of the things about Charlie is, is that we kind of pride ourselves on being in a historic landmark in Montpelier and we don't want to do anything that's going to modernize us in any way, usually. So. <laughs> um, so Martha, I, I feel like I'm 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 with you on this. I don't want it to look all fancy and modern at all. Um, so I'd love to get suggestions on how maybe we could do this in a way that 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 goes with your aesthetic. Meredith, do you have a copy of that photograph of the um, earlier uh, image of the building when the windows were larger? Yep, I'll I'll share that. Okay, great. Were those larger windows original when the building was built? When was the building built? Um, we have a fire map on the wall that's dated 1861. Okay. And that's as far back as I can get it. And it was called the TJ Hubbard Saloon then. Right. I, I suspect it's older than that. I didn't check the national. Right. I suspect so too. I think a marketplace burnt down in the parking lot out back. And that's why we had this blueprint thing that was up. I, I, I would guess that these are the windows, the size of the original windows, uh, or at least a later version, because it's mm -hmm. a pretty standard size for downtown buildings. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not concerned about the restoring the opening. I'm very concerned about the size of the muttons and mullions, so that you're dividing this. What this picture shows is a single pane of glass. Mm -hmm. 
when it's into eight sections. And I, I, I understand the garage door concept, but this really looks like a garage door. And, right. Uh, I don't know if there are other windows available or what that, that are, have much smaller dividers. I, I agree with you. Um, again, I, um, this isn't necessarily my design. However, I, I would love to, I mean, but, but here's, here's Langdon Street. I mean, this doesn't look to spark either, honestly. I mean, it's, it's, the color scheme is beautiful, but again, like this doesn't look like it was original by any means. I mean, actually, but that being said, in that one, they were actually approved with a black color. And again, the reasoning is the black color looks makes, like the, makes the dividers go away and looks right. like the open window. Right. And I would love this, to do something like that. This one's a little over six feet high uh -huh. and you've got four panels. So each of the glass panels is only about that high. Would, could it be done with, instead of four panels, could it be done with three panels? I hope so. That'd be great. Um, and the other thing too, is that there'd be more glass and less a, a better configuration yet, I think, because it would reflect uh, is to make it the whole door into four panels. Mm -hmm. So that and I, I don't know the availability of that. Right. That's because it would still have to bend. Work as a, <coughs> as a door. So what I'm hearing from you is that you would like to see center mullins as small as possible and fewer panels. Um, the other thing, too, is that our picture, unfortunately, is not black like this one. So yes. if we had black mullins and the like, in fact, when I got this from Jesse, I said, are we are these frosted panes? Like, what are we doing here? Is this for privacy? Like what? But really, that's just the way the graphic is. It's unfortunate, but that should be black um, because it would be reflecting the inside of the dark bar that I spend most of my time working in. So I know how dark it is in there. It probably won't look like that in all honesty. You see what I'm saying? The other thing is with the with the proper aluminum extrusion, you could eliminate the center bar. Oh, right. You could eliminate the center bar and do three panels yep. across, which would give you more glass. It, it, it would a more traditional window pattern would be just divided down, divided vertically and horizontal into four panes. Uh, the the problem that? the problem there is you've got a three foot to it, for a garage door to open, you've got a, a three foot piece of glass, which is big, trying to fold it inside. It won't, it won't run on a track very what well. What if we did something like this? Or you could do double hungs, but they would be pretty heavy. You see, you could open half of them, like the lower half of the window or the upper half. Right. Oh yeah, I see the thing. The double hung, but, but for that size, I think that would be hard to open. Well, it they be, might be. You'd have they to might. do two double hungs. Two double hungs. And and uh, you could. I I don't know how you want to ventilate it, but if you want the top open, you could actually probably right. make, it, make it so that the windows drop down uh, rather than uh, the bottom ones up, because you're not going to want it open on the right on the bottom. I mean, the windows that are there. Are Right, but why can't we do something like this? This has already been approved for a different building. Right, but it's maintain. Still a well, building. that one's maintaining an existing opening, and it's it's black. Um, in that particular location, it, it's a little different location than it sure. is on no, Main Street. That, of course. Um, can I say something real quick? Sure. Uh, just a thought. Because the garage doors only open the one direction, right? right? Just going back to Eric's idea about the double hungs, mm -hmm. you know, if the, if the window's going down this low, even with your awning, you're going to get splashed back up from the sidewalk. Sorry. So if it's double hung when it's raining and you can open from the top down, true, you're going to get more of that ventilation without having to worry about the water coming in. Right. On those super rainy days, we do have an awning over the top. You have what? Well, right. You have an awning, but I'm not sure if that's going to get protect you as much from the splash up from the sidewalk. I don't know. Just a thought. No, that's a, that's an interesting thought, and um, I just don't understand how how this is different. Is all I guess. Well, two double hungs basically get rid of the horizontal bars, two of the horizontal bars. 
So you have a center divider and then four panes of glass. Sure. I think and then um, again and then again you can open the bottom up or the top down, either one. I think the aesthetic would be to have it all open. I think that's sort of what we're going for, much like this building. And also the positive high windows open very, very wide and also ceiling to floor, just about. And also, didn't Julio do something similar on there's, the side? There's are sliders that go side to right, side. Right, but that just is large. And they are tall and narrow. They're three panes, and then they all open to one side so that two thirds of it's open, but a third of it has the, the three sash. Okay. Um, one other thing I was thinking of is what about front doors? Would that be more aesthetic confusing? Like a casement window? Um, no, but like, yes, yeah, like something that opened out, much like they do in New Orleans. Uh, yeah, I'd have to run that by DPW. Because okay. of going the, out into the sidewalk? Well, they would be, they'd be secured open. Like, they wouldn't be like the, flopping around. The problem, I'm just asking. The I mean, problem, I, I, don't, I don't even know if Jesse would go for that. But well, the just, problem there is, is that idea. if you divide this window in half and have this swing out, yep. it swings into the doorway. Sure. Going into the, into the front. Okay. Well, it also swing way out into the sidewalk too. Right. No, I understand what you're saying. Even if they folded, I, I see. Um, okay, well, I just wanna be able to go back to Jesse with recommendations. And I don't really know how this process works, obviously. So. <laughs> well, um, it, it, it can work a couple of different ways. Okay. Right, so the DRC can give you recommendations and then have you go back and redesign and then come back. Okay. Or they can give you actual, like clear recommendations of a few things to tweak on what you've applied for and yes. that anything within that realm is acceptable. Gotcha. And then we issue the permit within those bounds. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of ways this okay. could go. Great. It kind of depends on how we vote. I'd very much like to see it come back with whatever you're doing. Okay. Uh, Liz and Martha, did you hear what Eric just said? Well, I, I believe so. Eric, you, you're asking her to come back. Is that yeah. what you're saying? And this is a pretty significant building on Main Street. I think we have it. I okay. promise it'll look better than it does now, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and it's just, they're going to let me paint it now. <laughs> and just so we, with several options. Number one, with two double hung windows on each side, mm -hmm. two on each side. And again, that would be just a single divider in the middle, horizontally and vertically. Right. So they look like the other option the would would be with see what it looks like with three glass panels instead of four mm -hmm. with full width glass and no divider in the middle. Okay. Gotcha. Put my I think one of the reasons this building is so important too, it's one of the few remaining wood frame buildings from the 19th century right in downtown. It's most of them burn. Uh, yeah, so it, it really sort of stands out. Oh, we know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> We're very proud and of it. And yeah, again, it's great. And it's a, great. And again, whichever, I would check to see what you can find for a sash with a thermal break. Okay, thermal break. Especially aluminum. If it's an extruded aluminum product, mm -hmm. it should have a thermal break in it. So otherwise, at 20 below, again, you're going to be iced up on the inside. Right. I have a feeling that in the winter time we won't be utilizing these as much, but I hear what you're saying. And like we definitely well, they'll still be they'll still be cl closed. Right. And with solid aluminum, it's gonna be as cold on the inside of the glass as the inside right. of the sash as it is on the outside. No, and that's important because I stand about two feet away from it. So. Well, and that, anybody sitting close to it's gonna be cold, freezing. and then you're gonna end up with ice on it because you've got warm air inside against a cold surface and it will freeze and then that ice I, I appreciate that. will melt and get down on the wood underneath yep and that's not great either yeah okay. so it's great. whatever you use a thermal break yes the thermal break is super important gotcha. and insulated glass mm -hmm. I think and then again either glass. two double hungs on either side yeah or a three panel window instead of a four okay. with no vertical divider in the middle and no vertical and draw those up to see what they look like. Okay. Gotcha. All right, anything else you want to hear from me? I have one little thing I want to say to you all. 
Okay. And that is thank you so much for letting us have the outside space. It's really been a game changer and it's kept us afloat and it's brought us new people that love us and we really appreciate you a lot. Good. I to say that at the beginning, but I was nervous. <laughs> I appreciate Charlie O's. I don't go in there much anymore, but I had my first drink in Montpelier. Oh. I'm, I'm from the Midwest, and it was the only place in town that looked like a bar. Oh, <laughs> like a, bar. Thank a dive you. bar. <laughs> I love that. That was in 1975. Oh, wow. Job interview. And my mother had her 80th birthday there. <gasps> That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Awesome. Very cool. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So you'll Am come back to, to the my kids game. Yes, yeah. to the next it's meeting. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, so just send me tweaks uh, before the next meeting, which will be in two weeks, okay. to try and get that to us like the week before. Okay. Thank yeah. You so much, thank you. Thank you. The next application is for one thirty two Main Street. Main Street Condo Association is, oh, come forward and have a seat. Have oh. uh, thank you. Thank you. And describe your project with All us. Right. Yeah, good evening. My name is Bonnie Collins, and I'm here today uh, on behalf of from Mom Program for Quality and Healthcare, otherwise known as BPTHC, and the 132-134 Main Street Condo Association. And what we are here, or what we would like to do, um, is there is a small 25-foot section of picket fence the back of our parking lot. And it is in very bad disrepair. Uh, over the years, snow clouds, clouds of snow up to it. Um, there was a little gate that was open, but it has flopped backwards and now it's sort of rusted and rotted in place. So we can't even close the little gate section. It's just have one there anyway, in my opinion. But um, it's in very bad disrepair. So um, we feel like it should be replaced. So we got a couple of quotes to replace it with the same exact thing, um, a picket fence. Um, but we also thought maybe perhaps it would be just as better of an idea to replace it with a split rail fence, um, which is still aesthetically pleasing, but would allow water, debris, and snow to move through back and forth without Lots, causing lots of damage, um, be a lot sturdier. Um, also, the existing fence is, has five four by four upright posts that support that fence. They are just in the dirt um, and they are rotting off, so they're very wobbly. It, it, you can shake the fence back and forth. Our proposal or our, our little contractor handyman proposed that he would remove the four existing posts, uh, five existing posts, put back four, because it'll be a little longer span, and actually dig out the hole two feet down, about 18 inches around, and secure those posts with some cement. So there'd be at least 24 inches of cement. And I did include a, a picture of sort of the side view of the post in the glass there. Um, so basically, it's not changing much. Um, we just want to, you know, have that fence area be a lot better looking from the street. It looks very bad. Um, also, we do have a couple of um, counselors that are in our building. Um, they have children that come for counseling. It's kind of a danger to have that in the back of the parking lot open, I think. Um, it just kind of invites people to wander over there to see that opening. Um, I don't know. So that's, that's what we would like to do. You're planning on real wood, not the plastic Real fence. wood. No, this would be a, a pressure treated um, or cedar. Cedar is what we've, we've looked into. And then it would be painted white. Um, the uh, uh, 
other thing you could probably do, I think these fences is pretty easy to take the rails out. You could just slide them a little bit because they're sort of wedge shaped on the end. Mm -hmm. You could in the winter, you could actually take down a section of the fence so your snowfall guy could plow snow into, yeah, the, you into could. the river. Yep, that would be a good idea. And that would, uh, now, I, I have a question regarding code with kids in the lot coming and going in the building. Are you required to have a smaller opening between the components of the fence? Because I'm not exactly sure. I guess I would have to ask our insurance company if they think that fence would be okay. It, it's not our, you know, it would only be one of the building's tenants who has the right. potential. It's a potential. You know, we see children in the But in a, in a public space you know. where there are kids there yeah. potentially kids there right you may be required to have a smaller opening right between the components which is why my guess is why the picket was there i think because originally they... the picket was there because the church next door mm -hmm. has a picket theirs is a little larger of a version it's a different right. version but we have no idea when that original picket fence actually went in but the theory was it, it probably just went to blend with the church next door. We would uh, originally, um, I had um, submitted proposals for a picket, you know, to replace the same, just replace right. same as, same as, a picket fence. Um, so that is still an option on, you know, that we would go for. If, if a railing, a split rail, say, let's say had an unsafe opening or, or offered some sort of code, we have prices for both. The split rail fence, to be honest with you, will be cheaper. Yes. Um, it's more expensive to do the to do the split rail. But we were also just thinking of the water and the flow. You know, the split rail does catch more. But um, you know, Funny whatever one. whatever the whatever would be the most appropriate to to replace this you know fence that's in disrepair. One thing that occurs to me is that the picket fence, if you're looking at the picture, one of your pictures here, view one, um, it shows that aesthetically it blocks the view of the foundation on the other side of the river, which is a lot more attractive to me than looking at that foundation. Um, so I can see the real benefit of a picket fence. I'm staying with the picket, yeah. Yeah. I don't think the split rail is not going to give you that same blocking process. I, I think the picket picket fence would definitely be safer for cars, right? People and kids. Mm -hmm. uh, the temptation to crawl down to the river is probably there, right? Yeah. Uh, probably easier to climb on a up and over a picket fence, I mean, a split rail fence too, than the picket fence. If, if you use treated wood posts for the picket fence, it would probably last longer. It would last long, longer. Long and we would still, even if we went, um, you know, if we change it and we go with the picket fence, we would still like to put the cement around the post. Yes, no, that's a, that's a, that extra no, that's a really ability. good idea. I think that's really a necessary thing for stability. You know, in case a car backs into it, a plot, you know, you are going to get the snow against it. Just going to give it that little extra because we certainly don't want anything happening to it and, you know, pieces ending up in the river. And right. right now, that's a distinct possibility as it sits now. We're yes. really kind of concerned that it's not going to make it another one without you, going in the river. The other issue with a split rail fence is it's more subject to vandalism because you can move the rails out and they just get tossed in the river. Yeah, well, originally uh, we at home, we screwed ours together. Yes. You know, we put them in and screwed it together. Prepared them. That was originally the way I had figured we would do it. But then uh, Mr. Gilbertson mentioned, you know, maybe removing them for the snow to, you know, like they can bring their big back loader and once every great while to remove the snow. But 
I agree with pretty much everything as far as the view is going to be better if it's picket. It does match the church next door. So if you're walking down the sidewalk, it would be better. Either way, we just we definitely need to remove the fence. And I would certainly submit pictures, you know, tomorrow of, of the picket. Um, but it would be the same exact. It's going to be four feet high, 25 feet long. Um, you, you, if you're replacing what was there, you don't need to give us new pictures or come back if you're replacing what's there. I think historically the picket is probably more correct for in town yeah. applications. That plus a combination of the picket being safer for kids who might be in the lot. Because as Eric said, the first temptation is for they're going to climb right over that yeah. split rail. Well, the one picture that you see, like the opening, like you see an actual opening. I mean, that's what sort of sparked the debate of we need to do something with that fence is because, you know, one little kid came running out and you know, made a beeline. You know, I happen to be out in the parking lot, but, you know, he made a beeline and I, hey, hey, and his mother called him and hey, hey, hey. And then I said, that, that's it. We, the condo association, we have to do something about the fence. I tried to close it and you just couldn't. If I tried pulling that piece back over to try to shut that little gate, it's so rusted and rotted the hinges yep. that it literally started to fall apart in my hands and I yes. went, oh, the whole thing's going to go away. Well, what you can do is you can still put a gate in there for access or you could put a, a double gate in there for access with a latch on the far side the so far that kids, side. kids can't see it or reach it. Yep. That way you could do a you could do a double do a double so if they're removing snow they could swing it in push snow and then swing it back yep. out. Yep. And it, keep I mean, that hidden from anybody else can see it. Yeah. That's an option. Yep. As well. I like to make it fence better, but would accept the other one as well. I, I, I think for practical reasons and safety reasons. The pick it fence. Yeah. And that would be basically replacing exactly what's there. So, so again, you would just be putting back what's We're going to be the, putting back exactly there. what's there. The only difference is we're adding the cement. Yes. We would be adding cement to those posts. No, that's fine. Uh, so just a little reminder, these forms, they're the way I've sort of pre-filled out some sections, it's suggestions, right? So if you disagree with something that I said was okay. not applicable or I didn't say something was not applicable and you want it to be not applicable, you can you can tweak that. I just tried to do nope. a little, save you a little time here and there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. We can go through the criteria which apply to all projects. Okay. Number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. That picket fence, it's there. You're just replacing basically what was there with new materials and anchoring it better into the ground. That's acceptable. Okay. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use, including the fence, acceptable. Landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Projects within the design review overlay district and subject to the landscaping requirements in section 3203 shall consider the following. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, and other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards. And does landscaping obscure or undermine key architectural patterns or elements of the historic buildings? And that is acceptable. So just replacing the picket fence again for historic appearance and for safety reasons all in favor of the application speak your names eric says yes martha says yes to picket fence liz says yes and steve says yes so the picket fence is approved again i think in the long run I think you're better off again. I think I'm afraid the split rail would be an attractive nuisance with mm -hmm. kids coming in and out as you saw one heading yeah. there yourself. Yeah. Um, because the application itself was actually for the split rail, you want to just put in the recommendations that 
Or it's been approved with a picket. With a picket. Yep. And then, and there's an option for the double wide gate because that wasn't actually part of the application. That would just be helpful for the record. Yeah. And then I can Thanks. also have that for the contractor guy to say, yep. go ahead. And, and that's the option. The price gate is an out. option. If I it works, it's a great it option. And, and, that, and that would work too because they depiled the snow right in front of there. Yep. So once or twice a year, we can just have them, get, you know, unload it, keep it so the there's not so much piled against yeah. it. I think that would be a good plan. And hopefully it'll last another, you know, we don't know how long this fence has been here. So hopefully replacing it, it'll be here another 20, 30 years. If you use cedar or hemlock, it'll last a long time. A long time, yeah. Um, so Steve's filling out this form. You have a pen up there where you can sign it and then you'll give it back to me and we'll get that permit issued in the next couple okay. days. To bring it to you, or oh, you okay. here. either way. And we'll just stop you with this sign right there. Okay. Thank you very much for coming. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, Thank you very much to the rest of the committee for hearing me this, this evening. Have a nice evening. Thank you, and good Thank luck you. with your project. Thank you very much. Well, there's nobody else here for this one, so it's okay, but thank you. Okay, we can go to the next application for 20 Baldwin Street. Owner Alex Halaz and Paul Reed, threshold building and design applicant, remove and replace existing deck, replace existing patio, and add a new walkway. So we've got Will Shabon on for that. Okay. Hello. You want to describe your application for us? Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, as you can probably see from the application, there is a um, essentially failed pressure treated deck of uh, unknown historical era, um, essentially at grade. And uh, the clients just want to replace it with something a little more durable and a little less chunky in the uh, um, railing detail. That's pretty much it. Will it be essentially the same footprint? Yep. And where does the new walkway go? It's uh, so if you look at the pictures of the, um, it goes sort of to the, to the west of the deck, I would say. Um, so if you're looking on the, the pictures of the existing, um, it is this is kind of along the side of the deck. Okay. Yeah. So it's at the back of the house then? Yeah. Uh -huh. You really can't see this deck from anywhere other than the actual yard. <laughs> it backs up all to the woods of the Redstone campus there. We're just going to continue the stone around the outside of the deck. Yeah. Yep. There's like the ever so subtle. They like push a wheelbarrow through there from time to time. And it's just that slight gentle grade. It basically just level it out, essentially. I've got it up on the big screen, too, Eric. So there's the new walkway and there's a little bit of the extended patio here so that it matches up with the walkway. Is that right, Will? Yep. I'm good with this. I'm good with it too. Yes, I am too. Okay, I'll run through the criteria for this one. For strike structures, Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize the historic building shall be preserved. Uh, deteriorated character defining features should be repaired uh, rather than replaced if possible. Where the deterioration requires replacement, the new features shall be replaced in kind 
or in a in a similar fashion at the at that location. Um, no treatments would cause damage to historic materials, so that's acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing, size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. That's acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tabulature trim, other forms of molding or character defining detailing, pre detailing prevailing on the existing building should be considered in the alteration. Um, that's acceptable. This deck is not impinging or contrasting with any of that. Landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards. And does any landscaping obscure or under my key architectural patterns? And for historic structures, existing historic and contributing resources, such as street trees, fences, gates, walls, steps, gazebos, walkways, front and side yard pattern shall be retained or restored when impacted by the alteration of a building. Walls and fences shall be compatible with the site and the building and scale traditional materials and design that reflect the period of the building and are compatible with surrounding context. Acceptable. And porches and stairs. Location of porches, ramps, stairs shall be placed in a manner that does not impact or undermine the original and significant ornamentation or detailing of the existing building. Stairs, ramps, and porches shall employ suitable detailing to connect and be compatible with the historic and important design features of the existing building and new construction. Stairs and ramps shall be designed in a manner with details and materials that provide the most sensitive and compatible structure that fits the building design and layout acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Liz. And Steve, application is approved. Thank you. Um, so, Will, I'll be emailing a copy of the recommendation form. And if we can just okay. get an acknowledgement back, whether that's a signed copy of it or just an email saying that you've received it. Okay. Um, but it, that's not going to hold up the, the permit issuance because there's no recommendations on here. Okay, perfect. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have Thank you very pleasure. much for Thanks. coming to the committee and good luck with your project. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. And the last application is for 79 Main Street, Heaney Family LLC, demolition of two rooftop chimneys. Is someone here? Hey, I'm here. Hi, Tim. Hey, Steve. Go ahead and describe your uh, chimney removal. My dilemma. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so we have. Um, the, I hope you've seen the photos. You, I'm sure you know the building, but it, the two chimneys on the front of 7933 Main, um, in their day, I'm sure went further down in the building and performed a function. At some point, a very long time ago, someone chopped them off um, and left them sitting um, on eight by eight beams in the attic. Uh, and unfortunately they've deteriorated tremendously uh, over the recent years to the point where um, we're, we're trying to figure out what to do with them. They're, they're uh, a tremendous amount of dead weight up there. Um, and the parts above the roof, now the mortars failed and, and they're just they're dangerous. Um, the one on the right side toward the Blanchard block it's hard to tell from these views, but if you go up in the top apartment in the block and look over, um, that chimney has definitely shifted back just with the pressure of the wind coming down State Street over the years. And um, that's really the one that scares me the most, uh, that it's just going to fall at some point. So as you can see from the photos, it, it's uh, resting on the attic floor. The base is really deteriorated. Um, the, because apparently water was coming down through them until the caps were put on. Um, the other interesting aspect of this issue is these chimneys are actually um, 
the brickwork is integral with the front facade of the building up there. Um, so that, that outside wall of the chimney is actually part of that front wall that you see from the outside. So I guess this is, we view this as a multi-phase project. This would be phase one, basically just motivated by safety issues, is getting them down so that they won't fall and kill someone. Um, and then figuring out what is the, what's a reasonable way to restore these features. They're strictly aesthetic at this point. They have no function for the building. And with the weight issues that go with the current construction, um, they're, they're imposing a lot of weight on an old structure uh, unnecessarily. Um, it's, I know they look from those photos or if you're looking at the street, they don't look that large, um, but when you're up beside them, they're, they're really big. Um, and uh, I think the engineer mentioned roughly five pounds of brick uh, for each brick in those. Um, they just weigh thousands of pounds a piece. Uh, That's what we're looking at is basically just re removing them now for safety, uh, working out a redesign and how we can reconstruct um, something that will look historically right and hopefully remove a lot of weight and burden from the building. Um, and the answers to that latter part of the project I don't have yet. Uh, Tim, uh, I have a question that's totally irrelevant first. What's, what's the origin of the wheel in the bottom photographs. <laughs> oh man, you are easily distracted, Eric. That's great. <laughs> no. oh, I, I, there used to be a book bindery in the attic of that building. And um, that's one of the remaining wheels from there was big wheels with gears up on the in the structure. Uh, it, it, it wouldn't surprise me if it was a bull, bull wheel for a hoisting mechanism of some kind. Mm, I, I agree. But uh, yeah, this this looks like a a rough situation. You're going to have to take those down. Mm -hmm. But I can make a suggestion that the uh, Grafton Inn uh, down in uh, in Grafton uh, they put up uh, had a similar situation with chimneys, except they wanted to uh, put in a cell tower. And Grafton is pretty particular about what goes on with their buildings, the Wyndham Foundation. They uh, worked with uh, uh, architect uh, Tom Keefe and they had a fiberglass chimney made. And it you, you can't tell from the ground that it's a fiberglass chimney. Really? Hmm. I can maybe get you some more information on that if you want. That would be interesting. It's something certainly lighter weight um... Well, would be good but it also needs to be incredibly durable up there because the winds are uh, more than one might guess coming down state street when they hit that building head on uh, whatever's yeah, up there breaks them up inside of course with steel or yeah. whatever but uh, right yeah save, save the metal pieces on the front Those yeah pieces. yeah tim i totally understand your situation um i was going to make a joke that you could use zebrick but um that's not really that funny it's not, and I actually had a contractor propose it too, but no, no way. I'm not going there. No, no way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these, no. these are definitely uh, a character defining feature for this style of building. Yeah, they they're they're actually really attractive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's but I totally understand. I, I can find out some more stuff on the fiberglass. Yeah, that would I be helpful. That, uh, well. <clears throat> The Mary Fletcher building, um, the original hospital up in Burlington, uh, they rebuilt chimneys on that structure too. I mean, it's like a Victorian house, but it has quite a few elaborate chimneys that had been removed. And I know they put, put them back. Um, and I think they are brick, but you know, maybe I could try to find out a little bit about that if you, if you wanted to know another option. Yes, thanks. I think because really what we're thinking right now is if we can, because they will come down piece by piece, it's the only way to do it, um, is to try to save as many of the bricks as we can as they come down and, and warehouse until we're ready to reconstruct. And because these chimneys are multiple layers of brick thick, um, possibly if we can use the new brick at least as a facade layer, is that the right term? You know, an exterior mm -hmm. uh, on the new structures, um, it would have the same look. Uh, 
um, but not all the weight of all those layers of brick. Mm -hmm. I, I worry about the structure underneath of putting mm -hmm. the bricks back. Okay. Uh, who knows what it goes, all that weight goes down through. Well, you um, can see from the pictures in the attic right now, it's, <laughs> they're just right in the middle of it. But um, I don't know. I mean, part of the design, we had engineering ventures involved to help me on the design a little. And clearly, even the base within the attic, if we can reconstruct that uh, with a different material inside that wouldn't be visible, but would provide support. So that might be a steel structure uh, is what they were thinking um, it, then to build up on that. But that would remove even just the bricks within the attic if they weren't there could remove a lot of weight. The, uh, I know these ch chimneys often angled and you can see in one of the photographs that uh, a pattern in the wall there where it looks like creosote leaking through it um, that they they went down to the center of the rooms on the first floor through an angle mm -hmm. yeah it's it's a fascinating old attic up there but yeah it's, it'd be nice to i've always thought someday to finish it but we won't be able to do that without an elevator i don't think so that's a way down the road project but um but anyway, so I guess it's really phase one is, is just to remove them for safety reasons and then um, to come back to you with more plans as we resolve how to, how to do this. So, so it's, um, if, it, uh, if it's a safety issue, you could certainly re remove the existing chimneys and then explore the options for replacing yeah. materials that that have the same appearance mm -hmm. since it, they're non-functional. And as long as they have the same appearance as the existing chimneys, then you could come back with some options for replacing that. Okay. Again, if there's a safety issue, if bricks are getting ready to fall on people, I mean, you, that's something you've got to deal with pretty quickly. It is. Right. Anytime timber is holding up masonry, it's not a good situation. Because wood tends to deflect over time. Particularly mm -hmm. if it's overloaded. I agree. So All you right. do want to explore some more options as far as the possible replacement of them with a different material? Yeah, I think I'm open to any reasonable option that's going to look good um, and hold up well. It needs to be durable. Yes. So he, he would be coming back with a fresh application yes. for that. Yes. Yeah. To get him in here for the demolition once we have the documentation. Yes. I I will try to get hold of the person who did the chimney down in Grafton and give you that contact information, Tim. Thank you. So we can approve the demolition of. Oh yeah. Based yeah. based on a safety yeah. issue. Mm -hmm. And again, I can go through the criteria for that. And again, this is, has to do with a safety issue with the existing chimneys starting to disintegrate. And, and again, <laughs> feel free to say some of these aren't applicable if you need to, because we don't really okay. have a lot of demo criteria. All right. I think it's important to put, put in the comments, Steve, that this is a safety issue, that these are character defining features on the building. Yes. So, just, so it's, it's really clear. It's not. It's uh, and and I don't think we can make any requirement that you put them back, but I certainly would make that a suggestion. Based on the character, they, they talk about character defining features, finishes, construction techniques uh, shall be preserved when possible. But obviously, this can't be. I mean, it's uh, it's beyond preserving. Uh, deteriorated features shall be repaired rather than placed again. You're going to have to take this one down and do something in its place. Uh, severity of deterioration requires replacement of a character defining feature. The new features shall be replaced in kind and again, and in, in kind with a, with appearance. Don't, don't don't put the in kind in there because that means it's a, it's even up. It's, it's okay, I'll just same. say I'll just say acceptable demolition appearance. required due to safety issues.
And then down below, again, for the same reason, uh, demolition required due to safety issues, alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility and fire code shall be designed to maintain the character of construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible. And, and uh, I would suggest that they, you save the materials so when they go to matching and, and take some, have your contractor take some good photographs so they can find the, the exact pattern. And then. The, like the brick pattern? Save the bricks and, uh, you know, good close up photographs with a scale. Not not the whole thing, but a part of it, and save the the iron uh, S's on the. And I'm just making that notation here that the bricks removed, in the demolition process. Will be saved. for replication and replacement. I mean, some of those bricks maybe, you know, could be reused, it seems to me, but I, you know, I... No, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so basically this is an approval for the demolition of the existing chimneys due to safety issues, and then he will come back with a, an application for replacing. All in favor of the demolition as required, speak your names. Eric. Martha, yes. Liz, yes. And Steve, in favor of. And right. you can get in touch with Meredith, when you've come up with some ideas for re replacement. Yep, so we'll, um, Tim, so this is gonna go before the development review board in two weeks, right? And so they'll get a copy of this recommendation form. I'll get it scanned and sent to you ahead of time. Okay. Um, and when it comes time to rebuilding the chimneys, that should just be design review. I can't imagine that that would go back to the development review board, but we do need to go to the DRB for this demolition. Okay. Um, and so, you know, we've got, if you have any other reports, because we talked about those, that you might have some additional reports, um, it'd be good to have those before we go to the DRB. But I think that this, you know, this review at design review committee will be helpful for you. Um, I also have a couple, I'll forward them to you tomorrow. I have a couple of emails from um, Bob Gowans, Chief Gowans, and Chris Lumbra about it that'll go into the file for the DRB. Okay. Um, but I'll be in touch. Thank okay? you. Yep. You're welcome. Sounds good. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Tim. Good luck with your project. Good night. Thanks. Has everyone had a chance to look at the meeting minutes of October the 4th? Yes. I move approval. And I second it. All in favor of approving the minutes from October the 4th, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Steve. And did Liz? Liz, you were on mute. Did uh, you approve the minutes? I think I was at that meeting, was I? Uh, yeah. I think you were. I have you on the in the minutes as being there, but maybe maybe the minutes are wrong. Yeah, I was. I'm sorry. I was away, but I did I did come in. I did okay. call in from. I was in California. I was thinking I wasn't at that one. I'm just okay. about done. Okay. And does anyone have any other business? If not, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Eric moves. And I'll second it. This is Martha. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Martha. Liz. Eric. And Steve. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.